Okay, I'm up and running on Periscope now. A little late, two minutes late. Forgive me. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining in. Appreciate it. Hey, Holly. Thanks for joining. Everybody, follow Holly Amarandi. She's Perry's sister, Perry Girls. And she actually did a um, Periscope that... I found out it was similar to what I'm going to be talking about today. So follow her as well. Thanks for inviting followers. My iPad is not trying to cooperate here. Okay, I think that's good. Okay. Don't you love live <laughs> broadcasting? I'm doing a simulcast on Blog Talk Radio and on Periscope, Blog Talk Radio, the show is called Share My World Show. Thank you for the hearts. And it airs bi-weekly on Tuesdays at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The next show will be October 6th. So thank you, thank you, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. I didn't get a chance to greet you. Like I said, I had a little difficulty setting things up. But I'm here. I'm here. I blog. Hey, Shermanita. Thanks for joining in. I blog and I scope about my faith weight loss journey. The show is, is the same thing. It's sharing my world so that you can share your world with others. And again, you can follow me on all social media. I have a blog, sharemyworldshow.com. I have my YouTube channel, Share My World Show, where you can find all my archived episodes. And again, for those on Hey Experience Fancy, welcome on Blog Talk Radio. You can follow me on at Lakeisha Riddick on Periscope. So tonight's episode is called, What's Your Favorite Food and Why? Spiritual and Emotional Attachments. But let me get into why I do the show. There's four reasons why. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks so much for the hearts. There's four reasons why I do the show. One, I'm a believer in Christ, and I believe that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Blood of the Lamb meaning Jesus Christ dying for us. Testimony is what I'm doing right now, telling you how I'm overcoming Right. The second reason is to create a permanent reminder. Thank you for the hearts of what God has done and is doing in my life. Not only to remind you, because I want you guys to keep following me right as I follow Christ, but also for me <laughs> to remember myself. I have my blog, sharemyworldshow.com. I have the archive episodes at Share My World Show, and I have the YouTube um, videos. So I have a great reminder for myself. And these are things that you could do as well to help you remind yourself on your journey to keep you encouraged. The third thing is this encourages me. You know, they say confession is good for the soul. I'm sharing my life with you so that I can be encouraged and you can be encouraged as well. And lastly, as a believer, the um, Bible and God wants us to to fulfill the Great Commission, which is to make souls and to win disciples. So I believe that as you tune in, um, for those on Blog Talk Radio every two weeks, and for those that connect with me when I do my scopes in the evenings, that there is some connection, you're receiving something, being inspired, and that you too will be able to find inspiration and freedom on your journey. Revelations 12, 11 was just scripture for today. Amen, Sher Shermanita. Well, that's it. Overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So let's get into the show. Let's pray. Father, thank you, Lord. And thank you for helping me to just calm myself and get with the program because we know that everything happens for a reason and you are in control. So thank you for the word that you're going to give me to speak to these people as they connect tonight to give them a word to encourage and inspire them on their journey. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for inviting followers. I really do appreciate it. So, see, this is, I, okay, I, I love the Periscope because it's live, right? And you don't know what, what, what happened. So, I had all this confusion before, but I had to start my radio show, right? Because it starts at a certain time and it ends at a certain time. So, again, for those joining in, I may have to end the show earlier than I would end the, the Periscope. But hopefully, we'll end at the same time because the show is... Um, scheduled for 30 minutes, right? So let's let's get into it. What's your favorite food and why? Anybody want to share what their favorite foods are and why? Why do they believe it's their favorite food? And I'll just start off with the list. I mean, I've you know, these are, people talk about ice cream, burgers, pizza, cake, chocolate, lasagna, macaroni and cheese, Mexican. You love that guacamole, right? Um... Twizzlers. I know somebody who loves Twizzlers. <laughs> Ice cream. Yay. Okay. 
Um, what else did I write down? Steak. Some people are big into steak, fries, chips, you know, all kind of things, right? So, and why? What are some reasons why, or what are some reasons why you like some of those favorite foods? I found that some, some Twizzlers, yeah, I know you love them, babe. <laughs> some people like those things for um, taste, right? It satisfies some cravings, it's sweet and salty cravings. They um, remind them of a loved one. What else did I say? Reminds them of a special event or an occasion, right? Maybe with the loved one or a certain thing. You know, like you went on a trip somewhere and you find creamy food to be soothing. Okay, Holly. And there's some people like, you know, from their wedding or uh, anniversary trip or, you know, college or something like that. You know, it brings, sometimes it brings back good memories. Sometimes it may not. So here we're going to go into unhealthy emotional um, attachments to the food, right? Sometimes it's because of a loved one and you're missing them, right? So you're depressed, you eat it to remind you of that person, but it's not in a healthy way because you're mourning, you're still grieving. How about you're angry, you're excited, you're happy, all, all those emotions, right? How about um, remind you of an experience? How about rebellion? How about you know you're not supposed to do it, but you're going to do it anyway? <laughs> I, I'm here. We're going to talk about that, okay? How about poverty mentality? Let me tell you something about that poverty mentality one. If you grew up and food was scarce, here's the deal. As you get older, and now, I and mean, I'm going to go into this a little bit later as well, that's what I'm talking about, poverty mentality, meaning that maybe when you were younger, or maybe even now, you know, you may there may be scarce scarcity in your in your household. So when you can get, you know, food that you want, and it doesn't have to be, you know, beans, rice, uh, you know, that kind of thing that may uh, you may associate with poverty, you're gonna get it. You're gonna go and you're gonna really take take part, right? Okay. And then unhealthy spiritual. So we talked about emotional. Let's look at the unhealthy spiritual. When I looked at that, I thought about idol worship. Anything that we place value on higher than God is idol worship. And you, do you realize we can do that with food? I know we often think about, you find that with my clients, is poverty. It's a real thing. It's, it's not funny and it's a reality, Holly, because a lot of times we feel that we can't have because, hey, Ms. Witt, thanks for joining in, doing this live simulcast of Blog Talk Radio and Periscope of my show, Share My World Show, talking about um, spiritual and emotional attachments with food. So unhealthy for idol worship, right? Here's the thing. You, you can't live without it. This, this is what you feel. You can't live without it. And I know some people would say, you know, come on, Lakeisha. That's, <laughs> no, there's sometimes some people, will, they will be indignant if you would tell them, man, you can't eat ice cream anymore. Well, see, that's another one. Hey, Fitabulous Moms. Hey, Olivia, thanks for joining in. Follow her as well. She's got this challenge going for healthy bodies and, and honoring our temple. I've actually been doing the workouts, uh, Olivia. And, um, and I post them on my blog for the day. So I've been doing them. I, I think I started later in September, but I've been doing them. So follow her as well. She's great. And she's honoring, teaching us how to honor our bodies by praying and allowing God to help us renew our minds as well so that we're focused on a healthy, healthy temple. So follow her as well. So <laughs> yes, I, well, I won't say I'm enjoying them, but, but, but I'm getting strong. I'm get, I'm getting stronger, Olivia, from doing these exercises. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'm not at that place yet to say I, I enjoy working out. That's that's not the truth right now. <laughs> but I am getting stronger, and I am glad that God is helping me to do it. Right? Thank you for it. Thank you for putting those exercises together. Again, follow her, Olivia, and the Fit Tablets Moms. So here's the deal with idol worship, right? God is telling you, don't do it. You're going to ignore those convictions. Anyway, thank you so much for the hearts. And if you want to share with your followers, I appreciate it as well. Thanks, Katrina, for joining in. So, yes, you can learn. To, I can learn. to. Yes, I am open to, lo to learning to love it. I am, Holly. That's why I said at this point right now. But I am loving the challenge that I'm having experiencing with the workouts. Like I said, I, I see myself getting stronger. I see my endurance increasing. So anybody out there that's struggling, here I am, a witness. Five feet, four inches, 280 pounds when I started, down almost 28 pounds, and I'm getting stronger every day. You know, I'm doing some modifications with the exercises, but God is helping me. 
So another thing with the spiritual um, unhealthy attachments, God is telling you not to do it, but you're just going to say, I know better. I'm going to do it anyway. And you also believe that God's not going to give you the best then you're going to do it. That's an unhealthy. Yes, yes. That's an unhealthy spiritual attachment. So my story, right? My story is that I didn't get to this weight just by, you know, overnight. And I was able to, hey, Miss Witt, thanks for joining back in. And as I was preparing for this topic tonight, I am part of a, blo a bloggers ch challenge called Black Girls Bloggers Challenge. And for the uh, challenge, um, it's supposed to uh, blog on different topics. So today's topic was favorite foods, right? So that's what I'm blogging about. So if you go check the um, hashtag of hashtag black girls blog, you'll see my blog as well as some of the other girls blogs and support them as well. Just check out their blogs and see. They have interesting content. So when I thought about why, I said, why do I have these favorite foods? Hey, sisters, thanks for joining in. What's the reason behind it? And I hope tonight you do the same thing when you get time. You're able to actually do this inventory and see what are your favorite foods and why. I'm, I'm going to say that in a moment, discuss it. So for me, I love, 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 love pizza. Okay, I'm from New York City originally, Brooklyn. Yes, even though I'm in Atlanta now for years and years, I still consider myself Brooklyn born and raised. I love pizza, that New York pizza off the chain. But I'm like, how did that get to be my favorite? There's so much other food in New York City. Anybody else from New York City? Man, go look at my blog. I just kind of highlighted a few things. But here's the deal. When it comes to my um, pizza, hey, sisters, thank you for welcome, welcome, and thank you for the hearts. I realized, hey, Tana, thank you for joining in. I realized that I had an unhealthy attachment to pizza because it became my form of rebellion. Growing up, we did not have a lot of money, and my parents, we ate what you ate. I, mean, I don't know if anybody comes from Southern, good old Southern, um, <laughs> hey, lady, Southern home. You eat what you eat. You don't get a a, a, ch a choice to say, oh, I'm going to eat this. At that time, we ate what we ate. And sometimes, I mean, my mom cooked. She threw down in the kitchen. But she cooked, yeah, Southern. I mean, she sometimes she'd get that ham hocks, neck bones, turkey wings. I didn't like that. My sister, on the other hand, I hope she listens to this. She loved that kind of thing. I didn't like that. Now, fried chicken, yes. I like that. Some other pork chops, yes. But certain things I didn't like. So, hey, Pampered Chef, thanks for joining in. So, listen to this. Now, this is not funny, but it is kind of funny in the sense that I was young, so give me a break here. When I would go to the store to do, sh thank you, thank you, I would do grocery shopping for my mom. I would skim some money from the change and get me a slice. Anybody in New York knows a slice could be like a dollar. That's what we would tax. And I would eat that slice either on the way to the store or on the way back. And that was like my little freedom. Like, yes, I'm eating. I'm, I'm, I'm getting what I want to eat. And yeah, I may have to go eat some neck bones, ham hocks, turkey necks, or whatever the case may be. But I got what I wanted. Unfortunately, that transcended my into my adult life. Where what? I wanted quick, because, you know, it was cheap food, right? I wanted quick cheap food so i started you know really kind of getting into the fast food thing and you know i mean my husband will tell you i don't know if you still want when you eat fast food it's not you know really filling after a while you're like okay i'm hungry again right but it just well we all know there's probably some stuff in there that makes you want to keep eating it but it just kept going right and i knew it was unhealthy i mean Everybody knows it's not good for you, right, in terms of not the healthiest thing. But I still press past. And that's another thing, probably, right? That's another thing when it comes to idol worship. You know something, you're not supposed to do it, but then you still do it anyway because you think you know better. Or you or you or your wants and needs are are, are more are better than what God wants for you. See, that's wrong. Chemicals get you hooked. It's true. It is true. I do believe that. And another thing, reminding me Fast food is such a bad habit for me. It's definitely an idol. Well, stick with me here. Stick with me here. We're going to go through. Hey, Sandy, thanks for joining in. We're going to go through what's going on in my story. And then I'm going to give you some tips that I'm learning and how I'm wanting God to help. We can be legalistic about healthy foods. Amen, Olivia. I'm going to talk about that as well. So, because I'm never going to be the one. Hey, Gustavo, I'm never going to be the one to tell you, don't eat any white bread or bread or don't eat sugar or 
all that kind of stuff. This is your personal journey. This is your relationship with God. This is your body. You have to figure out what you need to do with God. And God will tell you because everybody's body is different. Everybody's, I'm telling you right here, we just went through favorite foods. We just went through unhealthy, emotional, unhealthy, spiritual. You have to figure that out. And I'm going to, like I said, t tap on that in, in, in a second. Um, you worked last night. Oh, <laughs> you went to the gym. Wow, that's dedication there, Sandy. Yes, yes. Okay, so um your husband husband had to have gastric sleeve surgery definitely fast food is his go-to wow wow okay so orange sherbet love that love that love that ice cream reminds me of my dad okay and then the final thing is me time hey pamper show hey everybody thanks for joining in for me time i'm a stay-at-home mom um, I do. Yeah, you love sherbet. Well, orange sherbet or vanilla ice cream. That was my dad's favorite. So I always, you know, would have that attachment to and to think about my dad. My dad passed away almost uh, 25 years ago now. So, you know, I just still have those memories. And again, there's nothing wrong with having the memories. It's how I choose to honor them. And maybe, you know, God is helping me to find different ways to honor him versus the food. And we're going to get to that in a little bit more. Just hold on. Keep sticking with me here. So, how I love ice cream, but I'm lactose. Yeah, that's not good then, Olivia, being lactose intolerant and loving ice cream. Hopefully, you find a substitute for it. So, for me time, I would want to eat out and read a book or do something. That's my me time. But, okay, eating out and then, you know, you, you, you're trying to use a different budget, you know, whatever. What? That may resort to fast food. Not good again, right? So... How do, hey, Olivia, thanks for joining back in. How do we change that process? How do we eliminate it? How do we get from the unhealthy and the unhealthy spiritual and the unhealthy emotional to you had sugar cravings, had to have candy after every meal? Oh, you're talking about me right there, Pamper Chef. I just talked about that in terms of look at my previous scopes on YouTube about having to have some kind of sweet after every, I did, hey, B, how you doing? Having to have sweets every day in terms of my dessert. And God saying, what, why do you need to have that? Who told you that you needed to have it every night? And I've been blessed that you can check my blog. I post my food journal there that I have not had it every night. I've had it some nights, but not every night. That's a big change. Again, we're changing our, our minds, our habits, our, our processes here. And that takes, takes um, you know, uh, uh, some wisdom. So the first thing to do to change it, you love your cocoa nibs. Oh, okay. Thanks. That's maybe some good. <laughs> thank you. That's some good uh, um, choices there. First thing, list your favorite foods. Put them, write them down. Figure it out. Okay, what's going on here, right? S see if there's a pattern. Like you like all sweet things. You like all carb things. You like whatever, whatever. Okay, then ask God to reveal healthy chocolate. Yes, ask God to reveal the spiritual, emotional triggers regarding that foods, those foods. He will do it to you. When I did it tonight, I was just like, wow, look at that. Going back to that poverty mentality and my rebellion, my dad, my me time, satisfying cravings with sweets. Hey, God is going to give you that wisdom if you ask for it. Third, ask God to give you wisdom on how to replace those unhealthy attachments with healthy ones. And for me, that's been renewing my mind daily. Okay, that's the fifth thing. Fourth thing, renewing your mind daily by applying the new habits and the new mindset. He's going to do it. And the issue is it's a choice. You, It's not like I, I laughed and talked about anybody watching New Jack City and I said the sweets be calling me like the crack was calling Pookie in New Jack City. It be calling me. But see, that's what happens when you make something an idol. It has control over you. <laughs> you don't have control over it. Isn't that something? You don't even realize it, but it has control over you where it's calling you, calling, and then you feel like you, I'm telling you, Katrina, and then you feel like you have no control and that you have to give in. That's not God. <coughs> Excuse me. So really look at those things as well. Okay, so you renew your mind daily and ask God to help you put those new um, habits and, and things into, into um, um, practice, right? But here's the thing. I want you to know something here. You may have to fast from that favorite food. Now, some, we don't like to hear that sometimes, right? You'd be like, oh, we think that the church has to put us on a fast, right? In a study, mice chose sugar or for cocaine. I, I believe it, Olivia. 
Sugar, Sugar has some, uh, some, some stuff going on. Hey, Meryl Shepard. So you may have to, to fast from that favorite food un- for a time, okay? Until God can allow you the spirit of what? Self-control t- for that to flow. Now, I'm, you know what your issues are, okay? You know what you may need to do. Now, if you can't fast from it, then you know that, that may be an idol. That may be something that God is trying to, because again, God is never trying to take something away from us that is, that is our good, right? He, he is good. He, to me, I'm always thinking of delayed gratification. Praying the Lord gives you some strength to fasten of idols. Amen. Amen. So I always give you guys, uh, if you follow me, you go back to my previous miracles breakthrough. Amen. Amen. So I'll give you bi- biblical examples. If you follow me, if, you can even go back to my YouTube channel and look at the one of the last shows I did where I was just so excited about, I'm like, I am free, living in my freedom versus wanting to be free. And it was called, I was hoodwinked, <laughs> bamboozled. I did say that, everybody. If anybody watched that Malcolm X movie, not talking about race. I'm talking about sin, okay? I was hoodwinked. I was bamboozled. I was led astray. I was run amok, okay, about not walking in my freedom. And it came in terms of food and being able to to not be bound. And I referenced Genesis, the third chapter. Please, please, please. Oh, man, I left my Bible. Okay. Um. Well, I have another Bible here. Well... I know it. If you know the story of, of Adam and Eve and the fruit. Okay, no more yo-yo diets. Amen, Meryl, because here's the deal. If you look at this as a renewal of your mind daily, you look at this as a process, you look at this as God is replacing what was um, wrong in terms of our mentality, our habits, then yes, it's going to be for life. Now, keep looking because I have a timer um, on it. Oh, Oh, here's my Bible. I was like, I know I brought it downstairs. So Genesis, you look at the second chapter, the third chapter. I talked about Adam and Eve. Here's my thoughts. Here's my revelations. And you can, you know, share yours. Healthy lifestyle for life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Olivia. Hey, R.D. McLemore. This is something that I discovered when I'm doing when I was doing the scope. I pray before I do the scopes and I ask God to give me wisdom about what I'm supposed to share. I want you guys to consider something here. When God told um Adam, okay, not to eat of the tree, go back, okay, to Genesis, the second chapter, okay, and go to the ninth verse. He said, out of the ground, the Lord God caused to grow every tree that is pleasing to the sight and good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, okay, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, beauty on the outside and outside. Yes, thank you, Jesus. So look at that, Genesis, the second and ninth chapter. So I want you to consider just go with me with this, okay? Consider the fact that I don't think that we were never supposed to eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil. I think that was another test, okay? Not a temptation, but a test for us that we could have passed at the time, okay? To what? To know and trust God. Because the instructions were very clear. If you look at Genesis, the second chapter, and the uh, 16th and 17th verse, he says, The Lord God commanded the man, saying, From any tree of the garden you may eat freely, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat it, you will surely die. He never said you will never eat from that tree. Now, I'm interpreting that because that's the revelation that I got now. I'm saying he never said you will never eat from that because think about it. We were created in the image of God, right? So, yes, it was about the, their, their obedience, trusting God, knowing that, you know what? I'm telling you for your good. If you love me, obey me. That's scripture, right? If you love me, obey me. So that's what it was. It wasn't that, oh, the food was bad. This is where I'm, I am I agree with you, um, Olivia. Don't be legalistic about the food. I think I just said that even in my other scope. Don't be legalistic about the food, okay? Because the food is good, okay, <laughs> for your enjoyment. Okay, yes, figure out your own issues. I told you guys for me that I have... Um, um, history of diabetes in my family, history of heart disease in my family. So what? This process has helped me to, yes, food is good. This process has helped me to, by tracking my food, to be more mindful of my sodium count because I wasn't really thinking about that, right? Don't let food control you, healthy or unhealthy. Amen, because that, then it becomes an idol. And amen, fatabulous. Don't let food control you, healthy or unhealthy, because then the food is in control. 
then you are living in fear. And then what? You're going to live your life. Oh, I'm going to eat, eat, eat. I'm going to eat healthy. I've heard people say this as well. I eat healthy all through the week. And then on Saturday and Sunday, I have a cheat meal. What kind of, that is, no, I'm not, I don't want to live like that. Do you live like that as a believer? That, oh, yes, on Sunday, I go to church. I am holy. On Wednesday, <laughs> I am holy. But on Monday, and Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I am a heathen. No, you're not supposed to choose to sin. You're not supposed to choose <laughs> to just be like off the chain. Now, we know that we are living in sin, right? But we're supposed to be what? In the world and not of the world. Because we have um, accepted Christ, we're supposed to have the power, right, that lives within us to what? Resist the devil. But we ask, yes, we do fall, but the issue is that we can get back up. So when you live a lifestyle knowing that, oh, yes, I'm going to choose to cheat, I mean, I don't, I don't believe that that's what God wants us to do. I want God, I think God wants us to live holy, to live pleasing unto him. And, and as we make mistakes, we learn from them, we grow from them. And then eventually what? Like Jesus did. We can live sin free. I mean, <clears throat> okay, I'm going to end my um, um, blog talk radio show, but don't leave me here. I'm going to finish because I just have a few more examples to give in that scripture and then we're going to go. But thank you guys for following me on blog talk radio. And if you you can come on over to Periscope, I appreciate it. I thank you for doing my um, blog, sharemyworldshow.com, share my world show YouTube channel. I do appreciate you for following me. And you could thank you. Thank you so much for sharing my world. Now go and share your world with others. Be blessed. Okay. Yeah, it's a 30 minute show. And I have to and I have to end it. I have to figure out how to get this timing right here. But thank you, thank you for staying with me. So I hope you guys you can't do cheat meals. It's like a recovering addict hanging out with current addicts, vulnerable. Yes, Tana. That's what I'm saying in terms of the food. You have to be able to identify what your triggers are. Oh, well, I'm glad because God gave it to me through this blogging challenge, and I was able to connect it to my story. So I pray. So that's the thing. Some people, you know, okay, what's the trigger here? Now, eventually, God is going, okay, you don't want to ever still live in fear, okay? You know what I'm saying? I mean, at some point, if we believe that we have been healed, we believe that we have overcome, we believe that we have been delivered, we have to walk in it. I'm not saying you, if you a person is an alcoholic, they go to the, you know, the bar and be like, okay, yes, I can sit in this bar and not worry about, you know, uh, being tempted. No, I think no. But there's some people. Yes, yes, we're all at different journeys, Olivia. There are some people that are far enough along in their journey where they are not tempted anymore. That's what I was saying in terms of fasting. Maybe you might have to fast, you, your own particular fast from whatever one of these foods are in order for you to understand how to put it in its proper place and time. And that's what I was saying in terms of this um, tree of life, I mean tree of, of knowledge of good and evil. I believe that, hey, Lucila, that at some point if Adam and Eve had not sinned, right, that we would have been able to partake from that just like we would have been partaking um given permission to partake from it, just like we would have been given permission to partake of the tree of life, okay? That it wasn't that God was dangling this tree that was so good to look at and pleasing to the eye and dangling in front of us to tempt us because he doesn't tempt us, right? So you got to look at that for food as well. The, even, the foods that are your favorites that may not be the healthiest things or whatever, they're not there to, to tempt you. It's there for you to, how you doing? It's there for you to put it in its proper place, like, okay, like I told you for me, the orange sherbet and the ice cream, right? Okay, well, I want to think, I think about my dad with that. Well, maybe I don't think about him with that only. How about I think about his hats? I have some of his hats or think about some of his pictures, you know, associate other things with it, just like with the emotions. If I'm sad, okay, no, I'm not going to eat a whole pint of ice cream or eat a whole thing or whatever. You know, God helping you. Now you have to figure that out for yourself. Again, I always think about this with, with Eve. You know, she, you know, she, she, well, we we ladies know that she messed some stuff up for us, right? But look at that there. That sixth verse of, of Genesis, the third chapter, when the woman saw. So isn't that sometimes how we get tempted already with the food? We look at it and we're like, man, that looks so good. She saw that the tree was good for food. We're like, mm-hmm, it tastes good too. 
And then it was a delight to the eyes. So hear that? All of that. See what that, they say we eat with our eyes first, right? Any foodie will tell you that, right? Then, and that the tree was desirable to make one wise. Do you hear that? Where should you get that from? The enemy. <laughs> he planted that in her. He was like, oh, you, oh you, cause you're you going to be like God if you uh, eat, eat from that tree. God never said anything. Do you, I'm telling you. I know we, we, we know, you know, this, this creation story often, but I promise you, when you go back and read the Bible, you know, you get new revelations, and I promise you, you go back and read that those chapters, and you'll see, maybe you'll see some other stuff that I haven't even seen as well. Thank you for the hearts. God never said that you won't be wise. He said you're going to die. So what kind of, what, what, okay, Eve, the serpent Okay, who you're like, okay, this is supposed to be under your feet in the terms of you supposed to have been helping your husband name animals, right? And, and, and the creatures. God tells you you're going to die. You have no concept of death yet, but I guess that's not a good thing, right? He told you not to do it, but you are going to listen to a serpent. And at that point, people, I want you to realize something here. Everything was good. Nothing negative bad had happened. All he was doing, all Adam was doing was naming all of the, the, the living creatures. He was spending time with his wife. That's why God created um, Eve, right? To be a helper and so that he wouldn't be alone. Thank you for the hearts. So why in the world would she sit down here and believe this serpent? You know why? Because the thought was planted. And that is what I'm saying for us when it comes to the food. We have to capture that thought. We have to say, you know what? No. <laughs> That is not, whatever it is triggering, trying to trigger, and that's why it's important to do those steps that I said, and I'm going to go over it again before I, I end, is that you have to capture it and then replace it with something of God. And God will tell you, I got some scriptures, you know, 1 Corinthians 9 and 27, what does that say? It says, well, I'll read it. These are some of the scriptures that I have been declaring, and here's the thing, you know, 1 Corinthians 9, watch out for food marketing, modern day serpent. Amen. Because what? With your eyes and with your ears. Watch all those gates, right? Because it's tempting you. And then what? You didn't really guard yourself. And so now you're falling prey. You know, it's talking about watching all stuff, you know, on TV. Okay, so 927 says, I discipline my body and make it my slave. So my new declarations, guys, is I'm adding, I am free because... I discipline my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself, <clears throat> excuse me, will not be disqualified. So you see that in the sense that we are supposed to be in control of these bodies here through Christ, through the spirit that is living within us. So I want you guys to hold, hold on to those things. Yeah. So I'm going to go back and just read over those um, five things. Okay. First, I d list your favorite foods. Okay. See if there's a pattern. Second, this is Katrina. Yes. Go back. I'm telling you guys and watch that scope. I was, I was just on one as I, as people would say, and this is Katrina. Anybody watch 300 movie? Yes. This is Sparta. This is Katrina. This is Lakeisha. I'm telling you free enemy. You are down. You are not winning. You are not hoodwinking me anymore to make me believe that I'm not free. And this process, I am, I'm, you know what? I am embracing it. This is what I want you to do. Embrace the process. You're still in the hybrid scope. I still am too. I keep telling my husband, babe, did you watch it yet? Hey, film writer. Thanks for joining. <clears throat> Second thing, ask God to reveal the spiritual, emotional triggers. If you have unhealthy um, attachments to these things, there's something going on wrong there. Something's triggering it, right? Hey, Zoa, Giovanni, thanks for joining in. And those joining in later, I appreciate you for joining, but go back and check the replay, Okay. Um, so you can get all of the goods that I shared. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, you may have to fast from those things, okay, so that you can rebuild, recreate, renew healthy attachments to them. And how do you do that? Renew your mind daily. Romans 12, 2, right? I am free, right? Why? Because I, I have renewed my mind, right, daily, right? I will be transformed by the renewing of my mind, okay? And then, thanks for inviting followers. And then the last thing, repeat. This is a process. Again, I told you guys for pizza. Oh, and hey, Etiba, thank you for joining. Thanks for um, sharing, um, Katrina. I do appreciate it. One thing that I, I'll give you a, a, a praise report here in terms of pizza. I, I can't, I mean, I, I haven't found real New York pizza here. Some spots, but not, you know, all the way live, right? But I have been able to make my own pizza from scratch. 
and we do it, I do it on Fridays for the most part, that's our pizza night. And I'm able to what, control my own ingredients and I love it. And I don't feel deprived. But that's the final thing that I want to say. Here's the deal. You even saw it in Genesis, the third chapter. Eve thought that God was holding something back from her, that she was going to be deprived. Because what, if you think that this is going to make you wise, then what? The enemy made you think you were dumb, right? So think about that. When it comes to, to the food, nobody likes that deprivation feeling. I know I don't. That's why when somebody tells you, oh, don't eat sugar, don't eat bread, don't eat this, don't eat that, you just bristle like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, hold up, wait a minute here. Number one, you don't want to be told what to do as an adult. And number two, you don't want to feel deprived, right? But at the same time, you have to be able to, to tell yourself, like I can tell myself freely now, I drink water. That's what I do. I haven't, you know, drank any juice, and I don't even know when, when's the last time I drank something like that. Because I want to drink it, not because somebody is telling me not to do it. That's what self-control is. It's not you doing it because somebody else is telling you to do it, right? It's because you have developed a healthy relationship with it or habit so that you can do it for yourself. And again, that's what I believe God, God wants for us, so... Thank you for um, connecting with me. Again, go to my um, blog. You can check it out, sharemyworldshow.com. Comment, subscribe, leave, um, you know, share it. You can go to YouTube, like and comment my channel, Share My World Show. I'm on all social media, Share My World Show. And I appreciate you for following me, following my journey, because it's day by day, step by step, and now it's meal by, meal by meal. That's the pressure, people, to take off yourself. Meal by meal. Even God said, well, he's, the, the um, prayer was what? Give us this our daily bread. Every day, be open to God showing you what you need to do, how you need to do it. Because that's the only way that you're going to overcome and really understand and embrace your freedom. If not, you're just still going to be in fear. You're still going to be held down. So that's my, my goal. That's my journey. That's my belief. Thank you so much for the hearts. So... Thanks for following me. Thanks for connecting with me. I do scopes, you know, pretty much um, in the evenings, every night uh, after my kids go to bed. And the next blog talk show that I'm going to do is going to be, hey, Miss Nancy, I'm about to end, so check the replay. It's going to be on October 6th. So thank you, thank you so much for sharing my world. Now go and share your world with others. Be blessed.